Kia ora tato. We're from Tauranga. The Rena was a big event in Tauranga, and we're here to tell you how we coped with it in Tauranga City Libraries. Remember, you might remember some of these images. It's hard to underestimate the level of emotion caused in the Bay of Plenty by the Rena grounding on the 5th of October 2011. There was the spills of oils and other pollutants, the deaths of sea creatures and birds. The wreck of the Rena was a profound and traumatic event for this area, for our area, a real crisis. It's affected people's lives and their livelihoods. It's restricted the gathering of kaimoana, the professional recreational uses of the coastline and the waters of the area. And people have been understandably very angry and distressed. So in the library, we collected information about this event, as it was major, the facts, what happened and when and how and why, but we were also faced with a whole spectrum of community responses. So this is the story of how we tried to capture the widest range possible of those reactions using our Tauranga Memories kete. Right, it happened on the 5th of October, but at this early stage, nobody had any idea about the scale of disaster it would end up to be. This headline is from the digital edition of the Bay of Plenty Times. The print edition of that same day had nothing at all about the Rena grounding. In fact, in the shipping column, it said that it had arrived in port at 3 a.m., as expected. So it wasn't until the 6th that it became front page news, and then did it ever become front page news. On the same morning, this is what went up. So whereas the formal source of information, the newspaper and television started recording it as it was happening, there was another form of recording happening via the social media. So somebody standing and looking at the Papamoa Beach and there it is. And this tweet pic went up on the same morning. Note the optimism of this tweet. Good day for rescue. People still thought it was going to be okay. But it wasn't. By the morning of the 6th of October, Tauranga City Council was called in for civil defence. We were to lose a lot of staff temporarily to the RENA project as they were pressed into service in the civil defence headquarters which was set up in an old supermarket building on a main road. At the same time, Tauranga City Council's communications team went into full production mode. They were churning out media releases, fact sheets, email updates, and about 90% of these were born digital. So who was collecting them? Well, who else but the New Zealand room? Um, on the 6th, we began to save all materials generated about the arena, irrespective of the format. Also, I began using the rich historical collections of the library to do some background research to write a short piece about the Astrolab Reef. Now here's the lovely Capitaine Jules César Dumont d'Urville who was circumnavigating New Zealand in 1826-1827, and he nearly hit the reef um, in February 1827. He got a horrible shock when he saw it because the visibility was so poor that, um, he, and he thought he was near Mare Island, which was relatively safe, and then the fog lifts and there are these horrible jagged teeth of rock and he hoists all the sails and gets the ship out of there. The ship was the Astrolab, and that is what the reef was made out of, was named after. 
There were more close encounters in the 19th century. This is Captain Henry Williams, the Reverend Henry Williams, I'm sorry. It had a lucky escape, the mission schooner in 1828. And on that occasion, the Reverend Williams had to remind himself, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not fear, which I think indicates that he probably was very frightened indeed. The Nelly was not so lucky 50 years later. It ran aground on a fine night. Um, there were no casualties except for the master's ribs and also his um, master's certificate for a short time. He was accused of not keeping an adequate look out and he lost his master's license for a month. Incidentally, at that stage, there was quite a lot of sympathy for him from the people of Tauranga, which cannot said, be said to be so about the master and first mate of the Rena. Right, libraries have always collected local ephemera. Um, the New Zealand Room, which is now known as Ngawahi Rangaho, or Research Collections, looks after the documentary heritage of the Western Bay of Plenty, information about local people, places and events, and these photographs here are from some other disasters that has, have happened in the area, because the Rena is not the only one. So we've got the Edgecombe earthquake showing the buckled railway lines and the Ruahihi Canal collapse, floods, you name it, we've had it happen. Um, they're all documented in various ways in the collections, uh, archives and vertical files and indexes. So we're always going to document the Rena, but that's what we do. But the question was here, was this disaster any different from the others in the way we should record it? Yes, it was. As librarians, we were finding it very hard to ignore um, valuable bond digital information, especially via social media. For us, the challenge was that should we consider the social media contributions chit-chat are not important just because it was being used and generated by a generation of people who use Twitter and other social media as a normal means of communication, sent and received on the smartphones within, within seconds of being generated. As collectors of local history and ephemera, could we ignore this ephemeral information? Indexing articles and saving relevant papers was not going to be enough. Now, what I want to share with you are examples of some tweet feeds, um, hundreds and hundreds of them that were being generated. Um, and these are just some samples between 5th, uh, 7th and 15th of October. We had to determine whether this kind of information was important on doing research, I found journalist Mallory Tenor in her 2011 article said that tweets contribute to raw drafts of history. And she highlighted the story of Andy Carvin, the manager for online communities. His tweets from Cairo, Tripoli, and Yemen gave the followers of the Arab uprising glimpse into the front lines of revolutions. We agreed with Tenor on the immense value of tweets. Their worth had also been proved during the Christchurch earthquakes. In the early days of Rena disaster, we saw the usefulness of the tweets firsthand. This information was being produced and disseminated instantly. Much of it was extremely practical. Calls for volunteers for beach cleanups or other urgent work, warnings to keep up the beach, not go fishing, updates on the state of salvage operations. So we were faced with this huge flood of born digital information that was um, community and social media generated. How did we save it? 
it wasn't going to be practical to print everything out to save in a traditional paper archive. Um, it wasn't appropriate to save it in the city council's digital records management system because that's for city council generated material. We did ask just in case. Um, and we wanted the information to be easily accessible to the public and to keep minimal changes to the character of the original digital documents. So the ideal situation would be to have born digital material available digitally. Um, there were both formal and informal sources of information and we could divide them roughly into categories. Now, dividing things into categories is what we do as librarians. Um, there were, of course, printed publications. There's at least one book title out called Black Tide, the story behind the Rena disaster, and there will be more. There's the Marine Inquiry, the official 11204 interim report, there were hard copy newspaper articles, magazine articles, the official responses from the city council, various business documents generated in the course of the activities that the arena uh, resulted in. There were born digital official responses from Maritime New Zealand and media responses. And then of course all those informal responses so finally, on 10th of October, we had to create a separate section on Tauranga Memories Kite um, for the Rina, for community to be able to upload their stories, tons and tons of images um, and videos that they were taking. We also started embedding some of the great community-generated YouTube videos. Very early on, we got um, a, a, a super volunteer of the oiled wildlife response unit who had been uh, involved in the rescue of penguins and other seabirds. He was very happy to upload his diaries onto the Tauranga memories. These are some community generated images that were uploaded onto the Tauranga memories. Some very tragic while others very heartening. And then this disaster happened during the school holidays, and we had to think of a unique way of capturing the feelings of the children of Tauranga. And the way we did that was to put up portable display boards and invited our children to write about their feeling via the post-it notes, which we then digitized. Um, there were spontaneous reactions from the Tauranga community, including touching poems. We have kept the archive of poems and artworks by children. We have the, so we have the digital copies and the real thing. We had to find a way of um, connecting all this together. So as you can see, um, the community generated information linked through, through via Digital New Zealand, the formal information, and then we worked with um, Katipo Communications and linked the social media generated information such as Twitter and YouTube as well. And then there were digital stories just spontaneously created and uploaded. Well, g'day, here we are at Papamoa Beach and uh, it's fair to say that it is not a flash sight at all. Um, you've seen it on the news, but it's not until you're actually here that you realise just how bad it really is out here. I mean, if you look down to here, you see the, the black plastic bags just full of this oil, which uh, can only really be compared to that of uh, fresh bread dough as well. Mm. So we also had to work out to what to do with the amount of formal content that was pouring out digitally. Uh, we did print out a certain amount, because we still keep paper ephemera files, some we bound and put into the collection. We wanted the material to be easily accessible to the public, as we've said, and we wanted 
minimal changes to the character of these formal electronic documents. So once again, it was the kete to the rescue. The best source of formal updates was Maritime New Zealand. And we were frantically copying and pasting the updates into Word documents and uploading them to Kete. Then we started to think that the copyright status of uh, this action was probably a little dubious. So we decided to ask permission of Maritime New Zealand to keep their updates in this form. So when in doubt, ask. And I wrote them a nice, polite email. And I got a very nice, polite email um, and a very positive response back. There were, there were many other communications which we harvested. We couldn't keep everything. There's a lot of repetitive material. You can't keep it all. What we've tried to keep is a broad range of significant responses. For some other items, we just created index or catalog records and provided electronic access via our ordinary library catalog. Now, catalogers are a special breed. One of ours was a little concerned about cataloguing materials we don't physically hold, but we managed to, well, what I've got written here was we managed to persuade her that the benefits outweighed the risks, but we actually twisted her arm. Um, there was also a lot of Tauranga City Council material, and that was archived in their um, records management system. So there were challenges all the way along, how exactly to save the material, web archive pages, uh, links, copy and paste to Word documents. Um, we used all of those methods at various times. How to make things easy to find for the public. Kete uses a tagging system, so we put lots of tags on. And of course, this wonderful automatic harvesting by Digital New Zealand means that um, people come upon what we've put up. Uh, but, you know, nothing's perfect. We probably have to reorganise things as time goes on. And it's likely that the kete for the arena is going to be a, an, ongoing, an ongoing project as long as the wreck is troubling the waters of the Bay of Plenty, which looks as though it's going to be for quite some time. In conclusion, our intention had been, has, has been to provide an accessible and comprehensive set of resources about this ongoing event. We knew that children, students would want to research RENA in future. Disaster is always a popular topic with schools. And we know that schools are accessing our RENA resource and they are putting their projects back into reusing, uh, using, reusing the content from our project. We had 15,000 hits in six months. Um, and, um, but the strength of the Kete has been ability not only to capture facts, but feelings. For those who have been moved to write poetry or create art about Rina, Taranga Memories is a safe repository to store and communicate until we get federated searching, our patrons have to still look in several places to find everything about RENA. The library catalog, the newspaper index, the Tauranga memories, and our ephemeral files. But they will be rewarded by a rich variety of material. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Smita and um, Stephanie. Um, um, it was a really um, very quick encapsulation of actually quite a terrible time for that area. Um, but I was really, was really glad that the library was able to document the history as it happened and to actually also context it historically. Also, um, it's really important, uh, the illustrations about how um, the, the digital, the formal digital and the informal digital material was um, captured um, using tweets um, and capturing tweets and making those tweets accessible. I really like the quote that you included, that these were the raw drafts of history. 
Um, so I'd just like to say thanks again to these two, and we have got time for some questions. This person here, and we've got somebody with a mic. No, we need a mic, please. No, we do need a mic. Thank you. Thank you. Lynn from Taranaki. Uh, I'm really quite intrigued and I'm, I must congratulate you for how fast you were to recognise what was happening and immediately get into it. And uh, I wish we'd had a kete or something when we had a, a much smaller disaster in Partia with a very big storm last year where the library became the hub and if we'd had the facilities would have been wonderful to have been able to do some of what you did. One question I would like to ask though is how much time, we've listened to the keynote speaker and I'm quite sure that time from the staff would have been exponential over this time. So did you all put in a lot of extra time? Yes. <laughs> um, not, not over time, but, but certainly some of our other duties got shoved sideways. We did spend a lot of time on, on uh, making sure that we were getting what we could. And Smita did so much work on the the technical and structural aspects of it. I mean, she's the, the, the person behind it, really. Uh, we, uh, uh, we, we very early on, I mean, I didn't know from day two, sort of, I was sort of, we have to do something to capture this. I mean, I don't know why I felt, sorry, bad intuition. <laughs> I felt that we have to do. And because most of our staff were gone for civil defense, and Jill said, no, your job is to be here and you know, man the place. So what I started doing is started looking at the social media, what they're doing. So YouTube videos, Facebook pages, and went on Facebook and made friends with them and said, will you please give us your photos? Here is Tharanga Memories. And saying that if you don't have a kit, it is still digital New Zealand. Um, what I have been doing these workshops, digitization, and I've been saying to people, if you don't have, now there is digital New Zealand, you can upload straight on to digital New Zealand, but do capture them. So, and then it started snowballing a bit and we put ads out in our newspaper and told the community and the community, I mean, we were, we never thought there will be poems and pictures and memoirs written about Weena. I mean, wasn't that fantastic? We had a whole window display. We had um, dis um, children's artwork. There's a huge bundle of the original children's artwork and poetry in the, in, in the archive. So it, it yeah. It, it was an extraordinary time and, and, and very, very upsetting as well as, you know, so we were, we were all quite fired up about um, how horrible it was, but also what a challenge and what an, well, it was quite interesting as well, I have to admit. Yeah, I mean, the, the main reason why I didn't make this presentation totally social media based, because Stephanie and her role as the New Zealand Room collection, um, you know, collection manager, I thought, you know, we've, she had to look at her collection policies. We yeah, we had to. <laughs> we, yes, it was a, yeah, we, ha we had to look at it from a, a lot of different points of view. Mm. But what I remember mostly was this, just this deluge of, of, of material coming at us day after day and the headlines getting worse and worse and the pictures getting more and more terrible and, um, uh, it's um, it's coming up for a year, very very soon. It will be the fifth of October, and it will be a whole year since it's happened. And the recovery has been amazing. That's the other thing. And we'll have to be documenting the recovery as well. Hello, I'm Moira Fraser and I've um, spent quite a lot of hours documenting the Christchurch earthquakes. So I'm particularly interested in your project and I'm very pleased to see what you've done. Um, one of the questions I have is around the issues about um, was this your job to do and were there other institutions who also thought that it was part of their role to document RENA and how did you deal with all those issues about um, 
whose job it is to do this and which bits of it belong to Tauranga City Libraries? Oh, that's a very interesting question. Um, Tauranga doesn't have a, a museum that's accessible to the public. We jumped in boots and all, really. Um, it was a bigger risk to miss documenting what needed to be documented than to have someone else come along and say, it's not your job, you know, move over. Um, we, we would rather take the risk of being a bit pushy and, and um, uh, than, than, missing, than missing stuff. <laughs>